Hi. At a time when we can feel overwhelmed by everything that's happening around us, we can wonder, perhaps even worry, about the sense of our small efforts. Today, why our small efforts matter. Hi, I'm Rich Harwood. Welcome to another episode of Harwood Half Hour. It's great to be with you again. Uh, shoot me a message and let me know that you can hear me uh, and where you're calling in from today. It's great to have you. As I always like to say, we're recording this from uh, from our downtown studio, our studio in downtown Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, the question for today is this: Where have you seen small efforts that have mattered? Where have you seen small efforts that have mattered? You know, one of my favorite writers and speakers and activists is the um, is the great social Catholic social activist Dorothy Day, who lived. Um, back in the 1950s, uh, uh, a number of decades ago. And she once wrote um, something that has caught my attention and something that I've used now for many, many years um, in making speeches in my own writing. And in fact, um, when you buy my new book that's coming out in October, this will be the first page that you see. She wrote, people say, what good can one person do? What is the sense of our small effort? She said, people say, what good can one person do? What is the sense of our small effort? A couple of few weeks ago, I was in Rockford, Illinois, right outside Chicago on my speaking tour. And right before um, I was introduced, I was talking to a gentleman about what's going on in Rockford, in his life, in the country. And he turned to me at one point and he lamented um, by saying, I have never seen things this bad in our country. I've never seen things this bad in our country. And it's a refrain that I hear over and over again wherever I go and visit communities, wherever I speak, wherever we're working with folks. Um, much like this man in Rockford said, I have never seen things this bad in our country. We can feel as if we're living through a period of upheaval. Our public discourse is toxic. Um, our politics are gridlocked. It seems as though at times we're not making progress on the issues that matter most to us in our lives. And amid this upheaval, we ourselves as individuals can feel so small. We can feel incredibly small relative to the challenges that we face. This upheaval and our sense of smallness can raise self doubts in us and worry about whether or not our efforts really do matter, whether or not the small efforts that we take in our daily lives add up to anything. And so Dorothy Day said this in response to that self-doubt. She said this in response to the feeling of smallness that some of us have, particularly now. She said the following in relationship to the upheaval that she was writing about decades ago, but that I think still applies to us now in 2019. She said, we cannot see that we must lay one brick at a time take one step at a time. Dorothy Day believed, as do I, that our actions ripple out far beyond whatever our imagination can be, whatever our imagination is, wherever our imagination might take us, that our actions ripple out. But first, we have to take one step at a time, lay one brick at a time. I recently wrote about this in a, in a letter, what we call our Sunday letter here at the Institute. And I got an amazing number of responses to it. One was from someone when I asked them about the small steps that folks were taking in their lives. One gentleman uh, from Delaware wrote to me and he said, you know, some years ago I held a discussion in my community and I wondered all this time whether or not anything had ever come of it, whether or not people even thought about it, whether or not it had any kind of impact on the lives of folks who were in that room that night. And many years later, he was at a, an event, a festival, I believe, in his community. And the, the person who started the event, this big event in his community, turned to him and said, you know, you know where this idea came from? This idea came from that small conversation that you invited me to be part of years ago. And this gentleman who wrote to me, who emailed me back after this Sunday letter, said, you know, I had no idea. I had no idea that that small effort had all that effect and is now impacting all these people in our community. 
I was talking to someone in Chicago yesterday, and they were telling me about these conversations that they held across Chicago. And she said that out of those conversations, uh, there were a number of people who were concerned about um, how welcoming we were or they were in their neighborhood um, to new immigrants. And so this idea came out to create a sign, maybe you've heard of it, that said, hate has no home here. Hate has no home here. And she said, when the folks came up with the idea, they, they actually turned to some high school students and they're the ones who actually came up with this tagline, hate has no home here. And they decided to print up that sign and on those signs there are, uh, hate has no home here is listed in different languages. And lo and behold, those signs started to pop up in this neighborhood and then spread across Ch Chicago. And I said to the person I was talking to yesterday in Chicago, I said, you know, it's funny, there's one of those signs in my neighborhood here in Bethesda, Maryland, a thousand miles or so away from Chicago. And we were talking about the fact that here it was, this one little conversation that these people who had no official position, who didn't run an organization, who just got together, this one conversation sparked them to think about maybe hanging up a sign that sparked them to reach out to high school kids who created the tagline where they then printed the sign in different languages, which then spread across Chicago and which has made it all the way here to Bethesda, Maryland, where I see signs not only in my neighborhood in Bethesda, but where some of my friends live in DC and in other places around here. Those kinds of things rippled out in all directions, far beyond anyone's imagination. I think of another thing, you know, I've, I've spoken in these Harvard Half Hour episodes in the past about this 30 year impact study that we've undertaken here at the Institute. And one community that we've looked at, there was a CEO, a new CEO. This is a, a little larger story, but just goes to show what can happen. There was a new CEO of a United Way that um, the United Way wasn't being very effective. And this new CEO was brought in and he turned to his board chair and the board chair turned to him and she said, you know, how can we be more relevant to the community here where we live? And so they decided to focus on education issues. And then they decided after they made the decision to focus on education issues that they'd go out and hold some community conversations using some of the tools from the Harwood Institute. And in those conversations, uh, people in this community said, well, we're actually concerned about education, but what we're really concerned about is middle school and what happens to our kids in middle school because we think we lose them in middle school and that actually prevents them, or at least some of them, from graduating or succeeding in high school the way that they really could. And then as they began to dig deeper into this issue and talk more to people in this community, do more community conversations and look at the data, what they realized was it wasn't really a middle school problem. It was that kids who are adolescents who happen to be going to middle school feel like they don't have enough adults in their lives to mentor them and guide them in their lives. And that the truancy problems and the suspension problems that were being faced in school really were an outgrowth of something much larger in the lives of these kids. And so this United Way, which was more abound and not relevant to their community, went out and focused on education. They realized that there was a middle school issue around truancy and suspensions and other things. When they dug deeper, they realized the issue wasn't really middle school, but adolescent kids who happened to be in middle school, which then prompted them to galvanize the community to act on this. So hundreds of volunteers, adults said, we will guide and mentor these kids. 30 or more organizations came around and surrounded these kids. The middle school did begin to take action. And lo and behold, what they found is that more kids made their way through middle school. The truancy rates went down. Graduation rates ultimately in high school went up. Suspensions went down. Kids are more successful. They feel more loved and guided by adults. And all this started, and by the way, this now has resulted in a countywide collective impact effort on um, cradle to career work and anti-poverty work. Uh, that many, many organizations are involved in and that efforts are taking place. And so think about it. All this started by one new CEO, one new CEO of United Way sitting with his board chair and the board chair turned to him and said, how can we make our United Way more relevant? That's how this whole thing started. That's, that's how it all got started. 
They took one step at a time, laid one brick at a time, and that one small effort really did matter in the lives of now thousands of middle school kids um, in this community and now kids who are making their way through high school and now ultimately it will make a huge difference in the larger efforts that are taking place across the county. So I know, I know many of us can feel small today. I know many of us, many of you have doubts about whether or not your small actions matter. That in a world where our discourse is so toxic, there is so much gridlock, there is such a mess uh, down the road in the national capital in Washington, D.C., and many of our state capitals, that we're not making progress on some of the large issues that we really care about. We can just feel small, like our efforts don't matter. We can, when the news comes on in the morning, decide to turn it off and want to pull the covers back over our head and go back to sleep. I know when I watch the news, when I come home from work at night, I can't tell you the number of nights that I turn on the news and after the first 30 seconds, I turn it back off and decide to do something else. And so today, I want to give you three reminders for why your small efforts do matter, for why the efforts that you take on, no matter how small, uh, really do matter. And the first reminder is this. We've got to remember that our efforts ripple out in all directions. Our efforts ripple out in all directions. You know, if you ever thought about when you drop a pebble into a lake or into a pond or into boiling water, and, and all of a sudden that pebble doesn't just drop, it ripples out in all directions. And much like that pebble, our actions ripple out in all directions, much like hate has no home here, or the CEO who started that conversation in the community around education, which led to a lot of efforts around adolescent kids in that community. We don't know what's gonna happen as those efforts ripple out. So number one, remember that your efforts ripple out in all directions. It's not just the action you take, it's how they ripple out. Number two, know that those efforts will inevitably, invariably touch someone. They will spark something else in someone else. They will connect to other small efforts that are taking place. And so now think about the image of the lake where you're dropping a pebble into the lake. Think about it when multiple pebbles or a lot of pebbles are dropped. Or think about when there's a rain, when it rains and you're near a lake and you see all the, the drops of rain hitting the lake and all the ripples that begin to come out from those raindrops or from the pebbles. All those pebbles now and those ripples, if you ever notice what happens when they ripple out, they touch each other. They begin to ripple out in all directions. And all of a sudden, our efforts are being multiplied as we touch other people, as we spark other things in other people, as we connect and build with other people. And if you can imagine that lake being our community, when all of us begin to drop these small efforts in our own community, the multiplier effect is so great. It's so big. No, it won't solve systemic issues necessarily, but it will ripple out and, and touch us and activate us and give us a sense of possibility about what we can do together. And we can begin to see what is possible again. Which leads me to my third point that these small actions we take, they're signs of hope is what they really are. They're signs that we actually can do something. They're signs that show that we're not so small, that we don't have to feel overwhelmed, that we don't have to feel inconsequential, that we actually can make something happen. And I think more than anything today, we want a sense of belief that we can make things happen. We want a sense of belief that we can maybe come together with others and make something happen, no matter how big or small our effort may be. If we didn't believe that these small efforts matter, if we didn't believe that they might not spark something else in someone else, if we didn't believe that they were signs of hope, would the person have held the conversation in that community that led to the event that now touches many, many people in their community? 
would the person have held the conversation that created the sign that there that hate has no home here that then spread across Chicago in different languages and now is in my neighborhood here in Bethesda and is probably across the country. Would the CEO have turned to that board member and they would and would they have had the conversation about how do we make our United Way, United Way more relevant, which then led them to focus on education issues, which then led them to focus on middle school issues, which then led them to focus on issues dealing with adolescents which then allowed them to galvanize and mobilize their community to wrap adults and other activities and services around those kids to ensure that they had a fair shot at what they were trying to do and could fulfill their God-given potential. It seems to me that none of us would begin any effort if we were always guaranteed that something positive would happen from it, that something big would happen from it. We start because the effort itself has some meaning to us. It creates some purpose in our life. It has some intrinsic value to us. And because of that, because of that, when we begin to take action, when we drop that little pebble into the lake, who knows what can happen? But I think we have to remember and we have to reclaim and we have to own our imagination that something bigger could ripple out in all directions. And when it ripples out in all directions, serendipity can occur and it can spark something in someone else. It can touch someone in some deep way. It can build with someone else and what they're doing. And lo and behold, before we know it, it will make a difference not only in our lives, but in the lives of other people. So remember the three things about our small efforts that our small efforts ripple out in all directions, that we never know who they will touch, what they will spark, how they will connect with other small efforts. And always remember the third point, which I think is really pivotal and really important, that our small efforts are signs of hope. And what we need today is a sense of belief, a sense of possibility, a sense of hope, a sense of real hope, a sense of authentic hope, that we matter, that our efforts matter, that others in our communities matter. So here's my hope for you today. My hope for you is that you do not succumb to the sense of despair or disappointment you might feel in the upheaval that we're witnessing and experiencing these days in our communities and in our country. But that rather than succumb to the despair and disappointment, you in fact decide to step forward that you engage in your small efforts and that you let your small actions ripple out in all directions. This is how hope comes about. And you can be an agent of hope in our communities and in our society by knowing that your small efforts really do matter. So I thank you again for joining us today, another episode of Harwood Half Hour. Remember, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. Our work is rooted uh, in a philosophy of civic faith and the practice of turning outward. Uh, our work has spread to all 50 states across the U.S. and has been, been used and is being used in 40 countries around the world. We are taking this 30th anniversary not simply to celebrate what we've been able to achieve, but more importantly, to rededicate ourselves, to recommit ourselves to supporting you and others in the efforts that you're undertaking in your communities to guide the future of your community and to create a sense of hope and to enable people to fulfill their American dream and fulfill their God-given potential. Our next episode is Tuesday, not Wednesday, but Tuesday, June 4th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you'll join me again. And until then, be well. Good to have you with us. Thanks so much.